Today is um, the day prior to the celebration, the feast of Tamdankos, and we're in the midst of uh, preparing for that. And uh, while doing so, the Lord encouraged me to read a certain thing that I hadn't came across before. Uh, there is a very interesting book, a very informative. Uh, the title is Thus Shall Thou Serve by C.W. Slimming, basically talking about how the priesthood in the Old Testament especially served the Lord in different settings and different occasions. And on the last chapter, which is the ninth chapter, uh, we he's talking about the fifth time and because I'm going to record this for our information and uh, sharing as well. So let me go ahead with it. The Feast of Tabernacles. The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, The fifteenth day of this seventh month shall be the Feast of Tabernacles for seven days unto the Lord. On the first day shall be a holy convocation, ye shall do no servile work therein. Seven days ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day shall be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. It's a solemn assembly, and ye shall do no servile work therein. These are the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, to offer offering made by fire unto the Lord, a burnt offering and a meat offering, a sacrifice and drink offerings, everything upon his day, beside the Sabbath days of the Lord, and beside your gifts, and beside all your vows, and beside all your free will offerings, which ye give unto the Lord. Also in the fifteenth day of the seventh month, which ye shall gather in the fruit of the land, Ye shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a Sabbath, and on the eighth day shall be a Sabbath. And ye shall take you on the first day the boughs of goodly trees, branches of the palm trees, and the boughs of the thick trees, and willows of the brook. And ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God the seven days. And ye shall keep it a feast unto the Lord seven days in the year. It shall be a statute forever in your generations. Ye shall celebrate in the seventh month. Ye shall dwell in the booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. That your generations may know that I made the children of Israel to dwell in booths. When I brought them out for the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. And Moses declared unto the chosen Israel the feasts of the Lord. That is Leviticus 23, 33 to 44. And on the second day were gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people, the priests and the Levites, and Israel, the scribe, even to understand the words of the law. And they found written the law, which the Lord had commanded by Moses, that the chosen Israel shall dwell in booths in the face of the seventh month, and then they shall publish and proclaim in all their cities and in Jerusalem, saying, Go forth unto the mount, and fetch olive branches, and pine branches, and myrtle branches, and palm branches, and branches of thick trees to make booths, as is written. So the people went forth, and brought them, and made themselves booths, every one upon the roof of his house, and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of God, and in the street of the water gate, and in the street of the gate of Ephraim, and all the congregation of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sent under the booths for since the days of Jeshua and the son of Nun unto that day had not the children of Israel done so 
And there was very great gladness, also day by day, from the first day unto the last day, he read in the book of the law of God, and he kept the feast the seven days. And at eighth day was a solemn assembly, according unto the manner, Nehemiah, eighth chapter, thirteen to eighteen. The very title of this last feast suggests to the mind something of rest and the fellowship. What did it remind them of the pilgrimage of the past and God's faithfulness? The joy of the feast was the anticipation of that day when journeyings will have terminated and rest will be permanent. It was to them at the Lord's table is to the believer. We look back to carry and remember what is meant to him to bring us out of the bondage of the past and direct us along this pilgrim way. But let's also till he come. We anticipate the time when we'll sit with him in the face on heaven's glories and none to make us afraid. It was not only the last feast which terminated their ecclesiastical year, but it was also the longest feast, lasting eight days from the Sabbath to a Sabbath. It was the most joyful, it was the most joyous of all the feasts coming after the one of greatest solemnity, and thereby made the wonderful consummation. The joyous things in life are always more appreciable when they have been preceded by a dark or difficult experience. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. In Deuteronomy 16, 13, 14, it stated, Thou shalt observe the Feast of Time and Echoes seven days. After then thy hands gathered in thine corn, thy wine, and thy shall rejoice in thy face, thy and thy son, and thy daughter, and thy manservant, and thy maidservant, and the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow that are within thy gates. This was an all inclusive feast, no one was left out. It was sometimes called the feast of in gathering because it was the end of summer. The work in the fields was finished, and the time had come when they could relax and rejoice. The evidence that the nation went a long time without keeping his, this feast, somewhere in the region of 800 to 900 years. This is stated in Nehemiah 8, chapter 17, and all the congregation of them that were come again, out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths, for since the day that Shua, the son of Anam, under that day, had not the chosen Israel done so. Seeing they could not keep the feast until after they had left their ten life in the wilderness and established themselves in the land, there could be a question as to whether they had made any practice of this command until the return from captivity. The feast. And ye shall take you on the first day the bow, the bough of goodly trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of thick trees, and willows of the brook, and ye shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days. Ye shall dwell in booths seven days. All that are Israelites born shall dwell in booths. Leviticus 23, 40, 42. For seven days, all the residents of Israel left their homes in order to dwell in temporary booths. The purpose of this was that the people should have a constant reminder of the 40 years when the nation dwelt in tents, wandering in the wilderness, with no home. For the Lord had made a full provision in all things, so that not one good thing had failed. Also then, the Lord himself had become a pilgrim with them, and had tabernacle in their midst, leading them by the pillar of of cloud, the fire, that had brought them into the land he had promised. Then there was the anticipation. These were the people who would always wander the face of the earth, 
True, it would be as a result of their own rebellion and idolatry, but in all the wanderings they were to keep this a face to remind them that there could be a day when those wanderings would end, and they would possess their own land, build their own horses, plant their own vineyards, and sit under their own fig trees, because the promise was that there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Hebrew 4, 9. We are read for the trees to be used in the building of those bushes. Nehemiah added to the number, Go forth unto the mount, and fetch olive branches, and pine branches, and myrtle branches, and the palm branches, and branches of thick trees to make both this, and it's written. 8.15 Many of the trees used as symbolic. The thick trees would speak of a shade and of a divine protection. The palms have always been the emblem for victory, as the olive has been used for peace. It's also represented a fairness and plenty. The willow of the brook signify a thriving and a blessed people planted by the rivers of water. All the things while a reminiscent foreshadow the wonderful millennium age when man shall dwell in peace and safety and none shall make them afraid. Number 29. Numbers 29. This number of animals to be used in the sacrifices of that week. The Balaks to diminish him in number from day to day for the eight days were 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 1. It has been suggested that the decrease to one would foretell, in fact declare, how the many sacrifices of law would in the fullness of time be reduced to the one sacrifice that was to be made once in the end of the age. The anticipated peace would only come through the peace of the cross. There is a constant reputation in all of the references to the joy and rejoicing of the occasion, the gifts sent to each other on the last day of the feast, were special celebrations of joy, while as a sacrifice, the diminished sacrifice of this day was being prepared, the priest, accompanied by a procession of sane people, went down to the pool of Siloam. There he drew water with a golden pitcher, which they brought back to the temple, where the water was poured out into one of two silver bowls and altar. The other bowl contained the wine of the drinking offerings. This would be poured out before the Lord, and the feast ended. In this connection, during the Lord's public ministry, he went up to Jerusalem on every occasion where it was required for all the males. One of these occasions is with Recorded in John, the concern this face. Now the Jews' face tabernacle was at hand. His brethren therefore said unto him, Depart hence and go into Judea, that his own disciples also may see the works of the Zandadist. But there is no man that does anything sacred that he himself seeketh it is to be known openly. If thou do the thing, show thyself to the world. For neither did his brethren believe him? Then Jesus said unto them, My time is not yet come. Go ye up unto this feast. I go not up yet unto this feast, for my time is not yet for come. But when his brethren were gone up, then went he also up unto the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Not about the midst of the face, Jesus went up into the temple and taught. In the last day, the great day of the face, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If thy any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He then blazed it on me. And the scripture has said, 
out of the belly shall flow rivers living water. But this speak he of the Spirit, which they then believe on him should receive. John 7, 2 to 39. Thus the Lord was turning the thoughts of people away from the shadow to the substance, away from ritual, ritual to ritual, I'm sorry, to reality. At the time. He who delivered uh, will yet deliver. And surely as God brought them through the wilderness experience, the ten dwelling and uh, the wanderings into the promised land, which thing they were not to forget, because he has given the promised land to Abraham, and to the seed for the everlasting inheritance. So surely the Jews are to realize in this present dispensation then they are still pilgrims and strangers. They are still a wandering people away from their permanent address. The apostle writing to the Hebrew said, Let us therefore fear, lest the promised being left us of entering to his rest, and if you should seem to come short of it, seeing therefore it remains that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not in because of unbelief. The remains therefore a rest to the people of God. Chapter 4, 1 to 9. Then the rest is a millennium rest, when for the thousand years they will dwell in peace and concerning which it is stated, but in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain, the horse of the Lord, shall be established on top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and the people shall flow unto it. And many nations shall come, and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of God of Jacob. And he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go forth of Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among many people, and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and the spear into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up the sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. But they shall sit every man under his wine and on his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. For the mouth of the Lord hosts has spoken it. For all the people will walk, everyone, in the name of his God. That we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. Malachi 4, chapter 1 to 5. The wolves also shall dwell with the lamb. And leopard shall lie down with the cave. And the camp, the young lion, the fine thing together. A little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed. The young one shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the shocking child shall play on the horse's asp. And the wind child shall put his hand on the costerized stem. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain. For the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. Isaiah eleven sixty nine. Spiritual application. Heaven. The life of the Christian is a journey. The journey we have followed is one of achievement and attainment of going on with the Lord in deeper experiences and a fuller, richer fellowship. With Paul, we say, I press the gold, the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Philippians 3.14 Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is sent down at the right hand to the throne of God. Hebrew 12, 2. 
May we ask you, reader, where are you along this wondrous path? Here are the steps: salvation, leading to the sep- to separation and consecration, then receiving the fullness of the Holy Spirit, whereby we bear our testimony until the, the Lord come, and the heaven is our home. Having decided our position, may the Lord enable us to step forward into a fuller experience. Oh, walk with God, while it's dark on earth, with the pilgrim steps must fare. Contentedly, the world is mirth, and claim no dwelling there. Oh, stranger, I must seek a home beyond the fearful tide. And if to Canaan thou wilt come, oh, who but God can guide?